the incredible, the fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, come one and come all to a film you've never seen before. But remember, folks, no refunds. Hello and welcome to No Refunds, the podcast where we watch bad movies so you don't have to. A Cold North production. I'm your host, Ben Reynolds, and this week we watched Christopher Landon's 2017 film, Happy Death Day. Joining me this time, as always, we have (laughs) the tenacious Tim Miller. Hello there. And Patrick, the Law Morris. General Kenobi. (laughs) <laughs> I, I don't feel as welcome <laughs> check out everything we have going on over at coldnorthpro.com and if you like what you hear leave us a rating and review wherever you found our podcast and now happy death day oh hey you're up am I in a dorm room yeah I folded your pants for you great Dude, did you that? Stop global warming. You sneaky little biatch. Maybe you should switch to water next time. Super helpful. Don't be late. Two party tonight. Okay, bye. Bye. Tree, happy birthday. You scared me. Yeah. Look, I know this isn't going to make any sense. Stop global warming. Hey. I feel like I'm losing my mind. You sneaky little biash. Happy birthday. I've already lived through this day. Somebody's going to kill me tonight. So you can hear now. <gasps> Is everything okay? Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Assuming that I believe any of this is even possible. Sprinklers. Car alarm. The way I see you, you have unlimited amount of lives. Unlimited opportunities to solve your own murder. So I'm supposed to keep dying until I figure out who my killer is? You want to live to see tomorrow, right? Whoever's killing you knows it's your birthday. Pretty much the entire school knows it. These are signs of major trauma. You should be dead. You relive the same day over and over again. Kind of start to see who you really are. Each week, we all take a crack at writing the Google plot synopsis. Then we read what Google has, and Tim and Pat decide, try and decide which one's which, basically. And so, yeah, it's uh, usually hilarity ensues, or at least some form of laughs. Some laughs right. happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, we will start here today. Tree Gelbman is a blissfully self-centered collegian who wakes up on her birthday in the bed of a student named Carter. As the morning goes on, Tree gets the eerie feeling that she's experienced the events of this day before. When a masked killer suddenly takes her life in a brutal attack, she once again magically wakes up in Carter's dorm room unharmed. Now the frightened young woman must relive the same day over and over until she figures out who murdered her. Okay. I think I've got that pegged. Yeah, same. One thing kind of gave it away, too. All right, all right. Tree Gelbman wakes up on her birthday, which also happens to be the day she's brutally murdered. The moment she dies, she wakes up back at the beginning of the day. 
Tree becomes stuck in the loop of her fateful birthday, where the only way out is to solve her murder. Start that one from the top again. Tree Gelbman wakes up on her birthday, which also happens to be the day she's brutally murdered. The moment she dies, she wakes back up at the beginning of the day. Tree becomes stuck in the loop of her fateful birthday, where the only way out is to solve her murder. Okay. All right. And then next. Tree Gelbman, a self-centered sorority girl, starts her day with a shock, waking up on her birthday in an unfamiliar place after a long night of partying. As her day ends, she comes face to face with what soon what will soon become the source of all of her nightmares, her own personal masked killer. Immediately, she awakens back at the same dorm room she found herself in earlier that day and must now unravel the mystery of her own killer if she wants to ever stop reliving this hellish day. And finally... After her own brutal murder, Teresa Tree Gelbman wakes up on the morning of the day of her death only to discover she is caught in a never-ending loop of living the same day over and over, always resulting in some gruesome variation of her death. After embracing her situation, Tree employs the help of her new friend Carter to hatch a plan to bring her predicament to an end. Come along for a ride as Tree works to narrow the pool of suspects and track down her own murderer before they get the chance to strike. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So I'm just going to start off and say I'm pretty sure one is Google. And the only right. reason I could say that is because I don't believe either of you would use the word collegian. <laughs> I was thinking That's... I was thinking one was Google. Yeah. Yep. You um, guys got that one. So that one was kind of obvious. Um I wanna say two was Ben and four was Patrick. Well now Patrick knows. Uh, which I am, and that's fine. Yeah. Did Tim nail it? Did I nail it? Yep. Wow, Woo! Tim nailed it again. Well done, Tim. What were Tim. you going to say, Patrick? I was I was going to say that same thing. But I uh the the collegian thing was just none of <laughs> yeah, us are that it was smart. Such a giveaway. Wait, like, come on. Yeah, no. I I thought it's funny how how similar Tim, me and the beginning and the and the Google one were. Yeah. But yeah, collegian was like Tim literally like Tree Gelbman, a self centered sorority girl, and the Google one is Tree Gelbman, a blissfully self centered collegian. <laughs> yeah. Like That's fair. Yeah. Very close. Very close. Which she definitely was, holy fuck. And I was Tree Gelbman wakes up on her birthday. <laughs> but also like I, don't I feel know. like mine would also be almost the most effective, like these, I feel like this is a hard one to write an effective one for. Yeah, no, I was. I found it difficult, and like I wrote it down by hand, and where I take notes in my notebook, and then I was writing it again as I was typing it, and I like kept changing the wording because I was like, no, I don't like that. As like I was re as I was like re putting it in there. Yeah, yeah I, I had a lot of problems with that. The moment I finished the movie, I just typed out. I was like, uh, I'm fucked yeah. on this. I'm just going to write it. And once it, fuck it, we're going to do it live. <laughs> yeah. Yours literally does is, was clearly not proofread at all. Because no, I high. did not care. <laughs> <laughs> I just we sent it. Tell. <laughs> but I, good efforts all around. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the questions. So each film we go through, we revisit these seven questions to lead our discussion. And the first one is, how bad was it? This movie was not bad at all. It wasn't terrible, but I definitely wouldn't say it was great. 
Really? I did not think it was bad at all. See, my problem is, like, I love Groundhog Day, and I've been thinking, like, throughout the entire movie, this is just a goddamn ripoff. And even at the end of the movie, they reference that it's a ripoff. I'm like, all right, good, you sealed the deal. I'm okay with this now. I think it was a very referential movie, and so I think that, well, yes, Tim, you're right. At the same time, like, they were super aware of that the entire time. Oh, obviously. Absolutely. Yeah, and cre- they like I said, they made a joke at the end of the movie about it. Yeah. Well, and when we get to the forgettable bullshit, uh, there's even more like because they were super referential of like Scream and like a lot of other movies. Like even like the way the killer moved was super referential of like the killer in Scream. I felt like hmm. like when he had the mask on and he was like coming at her with the knife, he just moves the same way that the. the that the guy in the ghost, ghost face mask. killer. Yeah, the ghost face looks. Um, all right, so what made it bad? I mean, like Tim, I guess, was saying that it, he thought that the uh, refer that the how like it was like such a ripoff of like the concept of Groundhog Day, but. I, don't I wouldn't know. say that it made it bad. It made it feel familiar, which is yeah. like, okay, I've already seen this before. That's like the biggest problem I had with that point. But what, in my opinion, what really made it bad is it was very predictable from my end. It was, and then, so like I, so I thought I had it, like I had it pretty pegged early on. I was like, oh, I think it's the roommate. And then, like, I was. Then it got to the point where they were like, "Sure, it was John Tombs," and I was. I literally like, I had the note I had before. Like, I had started to think it maybe it was the dad, and I was like, "That would be kind of weird," but maybe. And so the note I have right before John, I I have dad or roommate. Like I'm basically saying like dad or roommate for sure. And then I was like John Tombs, what the fuck. How are they just going to have it be a random ish person? Cause like they had had the like news report about him. Yeah. And you had like seen the, like there was the prison, news report the and guard, then they brought the police, they brought him more into the story. And I was immediately thinking like, okay, but what's his motive here? Yeah. And, and I was like, Oh, just that she's a college girl. Like that's fucking really weird. And then I was just like, okay, well I guess it's just a metaphor for all the things she was doing wrong in her life. Like, which was a cool way to fit that in. Like, that was actually... I mean, it was almost... Funnily, funnily enough, the movie that this movie reminded me of most was It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> <laughs> Never seen it. No, I can see exactly what you mean there. Absolutely. And But then, like... It's not nearly as heartwarming. And then my next <laughs> note is, like, no way they let her go... They just let her just go home after all that, but also spend my disbelief as she ate the cupcake. And then, boom, my next note is roommate. That was awesome. That was actually pretty cool. That was a pretty cool twist. I and was I, so, I was like, I was like, wait, what the fuck? Why did she wake up again? And then she's like, I died in my sleep. And she's like, I never ate the cupcake before. And she's just like, oh, shit. And like, yeah, that, I and was just like, it was the roommate. That, and I was just like, oh, that was so fucking sick. Like, I, it, it I also explains twist. it also explains in the um, in the life when she like barricaded the window and the door and everything and like locked herself in her room, how the killer was in the room. Yeah. Which was Absolutely. really cool. And Mm -hmm. I, so I think that, I mean, so to say a few things of what this movie did well, before I answer the question of what I, what I think made it bad was, I think that they did do a lot of things of like tying, like they didn't really leave a lot of loose ends, which a lot of movies like this do. Um, They, there was that attention to detail to make sure to wrap everything up. Um, So it, and like give everything a proper conclusion to an arc. So like the the whole like life lesson of be be a better person, that was like that arc was concluded in Carter died and she was like if I if I succeed now, Carter will be dead forever and she mm-hmm. kills herself. And she like mm-hmm. takes that risk 
and kills herself. And that was a really cool moment. And then bringing it, like, not making it just a random, like, John Toombs, and then bringing it back and, and having there be that motive and, and that familiar familiarity was really cool. That being said, what I think made this movie bad was... I, I, felt, I felt as though they were going for that, like scream aesthetic and tone and i feel like they kind of missed the mark how so so it's uh because scream was a movie that like like we look back on it now as like oh that was a corny movie that was like made in the 90s you know whatever but like it was entirely a movie that was making fun of horror movies and horror what movies. i mean it's wes craven like exactly and like what they had become and and this one i think was trying to like reach that same aesthetic of like the absolute like most stereotypical everything you could imagine you know the absolute stereotypical love interest the absolute stereotypical like bitch sorority girl and like the sorority house and the picturesque college and all that i mean because that was a huge part of scream was it was but supposed scream to look literally like had like jamie kennedy is like in that movie like literally telling everybody like what is gonna happen and shit like that yeah no and that's the thing is like scream was very was very intentionally designed to look like a movie and i think that this movie did that like went for that same idea and that same aesthetic but just didn't hit it like i don't know it's it's hard to put into words but i just don't think they were as on the mark as as scream was and as a result because scream is another movie that i was constantly comparing this to it's just not as good as scream i i mean one thing I thought that, like, I thought that there, the, uh, you're, cause, like, so the mask was, like, I thought they, they used the mask very well. Like, I thought the mask was super clever cause they just kept, ha- like, dangling it around you and, like, and the mask was scary. People wear it. Yeah. Well, partially scary and partially funny. And, like, different people, ca- and because it was, like, the mascot. It was like, oh, yeah, there's, like, a lot of people would have this mask. Like, oh, and, like, you're like, oh, it's not unbelievable that, like, this person is just wearing it. And, like, that, and so you're like, oh, that's why she doesn't feel super sketched out when somebody walks up wearing it right away at the beginning, you know? Right. That's why she's not not immediately terrified. Yeah. And so it's like, I don't know. I thought, I thought they did it. That was a really cool thing. And. I I don't know. I I really really liked this movie and like I thought that the like I the in the cinematography and the death montage was fucking awesome. Like Yeah, that was just, really like, cool. Yeah, like they like especially like the end where like she like fell uh after and like her head landed on the pillow and then she like got right back up and uh, I thought that was really cool. Yeah, I, I just I I thought it was a great movie. With that montage, I was like when that montage hit and like how stylized it was with the music and everything and I was like that's the moment where I was like am I liking this movie? Like <laughs> am I enjoying this right now? And then yeah. And then I think that like I had difficulty figuring out if I was enjoying it because that montage scene i definitely enjoyed and then the twist i definitely enjoyed but the rest of it i was just like this is okay yeah i'm kind of in that same boat i don't know i guess i just liked it more like don't get me wrong i didn't hate this movie like i want to watch the second one specifically because this movie was actually pretty decent but yeah, I've, I, I the the second one has like worse ratings on just about everything. So, 
Like I, I still, I will probably watch it as well because it's on HBO also right now. I, I'll probably watch it just because I want to know how they get her back into the loop. But also, that makes me think about. Wait, is it the same loop? I don't know. I think it's a different loop. Even if it's a different loop, I want to know how they get her back into a loop. But that also okay. leaves me thinking, like, that's another reason that I think that I can maybe make the argument that this wasn't a good movie is that they never explain the loop. They never explain, like, this is why this is happening. It's just happening. Yeah, they didn't need to, in my opinion. I don't know. Yeah, I'll agree with Ben on that one. It worked fine on its own. It's like, oh, all right. Deja vu. It's literally the same as what yeah, they Ground did in Groundhog Hog Day. Groundhog Day, they don't explain it. That's They're like, true. oh, maybe it's just God giving you another chance. That's like the most that they like give credence to in Groundhog Day. So, <clears throat> Yeah, I guess that's right. And Groundhog Day is thought of as like a great movie from the 80s. I don't, I don't Which know. it is. I mean, I don't yep. know if you it's like a really it good not, one. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard a really not good to love one. Groundhog Day. It's Bill Murray. He's fucking brilliant. All right, so let's move on to the next question, which is which character was the worst? Mm. Probably the like sorority sister, the Danielle, lady, the main bitch, the, Danielle. No, yeah. she was hot. And she was hot, but that she wasn't pe- that hot. You can't just discount people because that you find them attractive. <laughs> like for this question, that's just like a terrible way to work. Tree it. was way more attractive, and she yeah. gets naked, so that instantly puts her up on the hot scale. Who? If we're gonna go there, uh, oh, the professor. Ooh, the professor was pretty terrible. Yeah, He's kind of a dick. Okay, yeah, you're you're definitely right there. <laughs> and, on well, his wife and, and the college, the guy who murdered the five other college girls or whatever. Uh, Jim uh, Tomes, Tombs, Tombs, Tombs yeah. yeah, yeah. John Tombs, yeah, he was pretty terrible. But I think the college professor was almost as bad. I think he was worse, honestly, because yeah. he kept trying to get with this girl. Like, and he was well, yeah, just and like, such and a... And then, like, sn- when, she, when she broke it off, the way that he responded was also so sl- sleazy. Oh, yeah, like yep. immediately blackmail. <laughs> just jump straight to it. Yeah, yeah, fuck him. Yeah, no, he was the worst. All right. The doctor professor was definitely the worst. Uh, so which character was the best slash most compelling? Definitely Tree. Oh, oh, I was going to say Carter for sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess I was going for compelling. It was Tree, but best, Carter. Yeah, I, guess I mean, that, Tree does you, have a you, huge transformation throughout the entirety of the film. Yeah, That's, and that, that made her compelling to me. But I guess, like, if you're just going best, Carter is, yeah. See, yeah, the thing I think I, Carter I think, has above her anyways is the fact that he's just willing to help her. He met her the night before. He didn't do yeah, shit, no. didn't really know who she exactly. was. And she's like, he's like, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to help you. And he, he also didn't have, like, wants it. I mean, he he needed a reasonable explanation of, like, this is happening, like, reasonable proof. But once it was given, he was just like, okay, so what are we going to do? Yeah, but Tree was far more compelling, and by the end of it, she was a good character. She was I, a good person. I did like the transformation Tree made. Especially and, with hanging herself in the bell tower was really cool. Well, yeah, and, I'll agree and with that. Like the, yeah, the, she was, like, and because, like, since it's not just the best, since it's also the most compelling, I think that... And, and so I mean, tree. that one kind of has to go to Tree... Because, because this was, was a movie, character. yeah, no, exactly about n- tree. Not only, not only that, but like, she was the only character that was ever given anything. Because this was, this is a movie that is the same day over and over again, sixteen times, and she From was the only character that was ever able to do anything different. Well, and yeah, and she was the only one ever given any perspective too. Exactly. So, so like, it's. I mean, it's an hour and a half long movie. And it's it like they go through 16 days. And so it's like the same care. It's all the other characters are doing the same loop for like a few minutes repeatedly. Whereas she has a full 90 minute arc to like explore. Exactly. All right. So was it so bad? So was it so bad? It was good. Mm -hmm. I think it was just good. 
I don't think it was so bad it was good, but I'm not sold on it just being good. I I, I think it was okay. Yeah, I'm kind of with Pat on that one. It was a decent movie. I'm interested in watching the second one, but I'm not going to put it in either the good category. And it wasn't bad enough to wrap around a good, so. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It definitely wasn't so bad it was good. Like, let's get that clear. It, it was definitely yeah. in the upper echelon of the movies we've watched on this podcast, but. I would even just go ahead and say that I think this is, I actually wrote that this is the best movie we've watched. Better than Starship Troopers? Really? I think so. Better than Death Race, dude? No. Better than Bangkok Dangerous? No. Okay, I'd say definitely better than that, yeah. (laughs) All right, so would it have been better as a Netflix slash HBO series? Uh, yes. Explain yourself. Yeah, what? Every episode could be one life. I don't think that that would be as, like, I think you lose a lot of the effect. I don't think that would be better. I feel like Tree's transformation would have been a lot more gradual, and I don't feel like it would have been as impactful towards the end. Like, you would have been able to see her. Well, and, like, like by the end of the first episode, you would have hated her so fucking much. Like, I, by the end of her first life, I did not like her very much at all. That Okay, yeah. okay, I'm going to walk back my statement, and here's why. is because I'm not going to spoil it for later on in the podcast, but based on a show that I've watched recently, um, it's based, it's, it's basically about... Like, you see the same events happen multiple times from different perspectives. And I was annoyed with it by, like, the fourth episode. So I'm going to walk it back. I'm going to say, no, I don't want to see the same episode over and over and over again. Just slightly different things happening. So it wouldn't be better? Yeah, that's what I. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying I'm walking okay. it back. Okay. Jesus. Okay. Okay. okay, I was confused too. <laughs> You're not alone, Ben. All right. All right. All right. All right. So, so finally, the last question is: Would it have been better with John Cena? Yes. Well, yeah, I think that I, it seems like every time this is going to be a yes. Put John Cena in make, the professor role. I'm into it. Make him the killer. Oh, make him John Toombs. Make him her dad. <laughs> oh, man. Ooh, John Cena, her dad. Or John Cena, like... No, John Cena, the gay guy. Oh, man. No, I like her dad because we only saw one scene with her dad, and it was, like, at the end. Imagine just a John Cena cameo there. She just shows up, and her dad is just, like, super mad <laughs> the, at the waiter or something. But, see, that's the thing is, like, it was, it, that that's supposed to be, like, a like a heartfelt scene. And so I think that would have kind of, like, ruined that scene. It totally so I feel it. like John Cena as the, the, like, closeted gay guy would have actually been almost the perfect cameo for him. Yeah, that would have been good. Make him the roommate. Oh, just no. Wig. The, okay, okay. Just give him I got wig. it. I got it. I got it. Not the closeted gay guy but a guy in the gay porn that the closeted gay guy was watching. Ooh, that would have been pretty funny. <laughs> or else he could have been like the room. He could have been Carter's roommate. Yeah. Oh yeah. Asian dude. Oh man. Definitely. This movie would have been better with John Cena. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right. So next we've got burning questions and I only had one this week. I don't know if you guys had any, but I'll, I'll start with mine and it was, can I have my phone spe- ring with a specific song on my birthday? Yes, you can. You, have, you just can. have to change your okay. ringtone. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. You. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and they explained that. Is the roommate changed her ringtone? Wait, they did, th- they did say that? Yeah. When did they say that? I know Carter mentioned he called her, but I don't think... At the very beginning of the movie, she's like... Her phone rings again when she's back in her sorority house, and her roommate's like, um, Oh, change your ringtone? Or, you noticed I changed your ringtone? Or something like that. And she's like, I figured that was you. Oh, I right. must have missed that. Yeah, I missed that too. Fair enough. I guess that that's alright. I... 
that that is no longer a burning question. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you guys have any? I I did, which is why is this happening? Like, what triggered this? Oh, why is it happening? Yeah. You already mentioned that one. And is yeah. there anyone else aware of it? Well, Carter. She told Carter. She told Carter, but I Carter's mean, memory is wiped every time. Well, yeah. But it wasn't. Like, I'm. You're. But you're. I, I just want to know the lore. Maybe it's Do you want to know the, the lore movie. of Groundhog Day? I mean, I would like to. Groundhog Day 2? Please don't. Because Caddyshack Two is terrible. Groundhog Day to you. Yeah. Groundhog Day to you. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other burning questions? Oof. Um. What, yeah, what uh, was up with that exact guy's room? Like. Oh yeah. Why? Why is, why is he having room? major rave parties in his room? <laughs> Also, yeah, that was weird. Yeah, he was weird. What was came off as a total nerd? So, like, maybe you guys will be able to answer this one for me because maybe I missed something. But like, the beef between Danielle and Tree was over Zach. Yep. But like, yeah, w- was that years ago or was it like yesterday? Or what's the, so the same night that she her, that she went home with Carter, she had made out with Zach. And and Earlier what's up with Danielle night. and Zach though? Danielle likes Zach. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. Okay. She wants him. But but Tree knew that. Okay. And, Ahead of time, and apparently. So that's, and they're sorority sisters, and so that's why it's a problem. Because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of like beef between Danielle and Tree, but then you need to squash it. They also act like they're totally like, Ooh. haha, we're just friends. I just actually figured out what I could use burning questions for. Squash what did you beef. guys think was the burst was the best death? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, actually I'm there's I'm going to go with th- her and Danielle getting hit by the bus. <laughs> that was, <laughs> that a, good was one. a funny one. Uh that's actually a super easy one for me. I I definitely think hanging in the bell tower was awesome. Yeah, that was probably the most symbolic out of all. It, of it was a great character I, moment and it was really cool because like especially the shot of like outside the school after and you just hear the bell t- the bell ring i also liked the car explosion that was a good one the gas yeah. tank leaking gas yeah, yeah. That, like you don't and even like notice whole, it when... and the whole sequence with like the cop getting like her getting in the cop car and you're like oh maybe she's gonna be okay and then the cop just gets smoked by the car and you're just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, there's no way she can get out of there. Because even if she gets the handcuffs off, she's in the back of a cop car. Yeah. So if I'm under the influence, you'll arrest me, right? Yeah, I'm on all the drugs. Yeah. yeah. I'm drunk. Yo, yeah, that was actually a pretty funny scene. Yeah, yeah and then definitely. when when she's like in the parking garage and she's hiding behind that super like skinny pillar, it's like... Why aren't you? What? There's a million better places for you to hide in the shot that I'm looking at right now. And then on top See, of that, why would you go for a car? Just, just hide. Yeah, I had a note about that. It's like killer is bad at job if he can't see her behind that tiny pole. He has a mask on. I mean, this I is very care. much like, uh, like it, you know what this reminds me of is um, until dawn. All right, Tim, I'm going to put a fucking mask on you and tell you to find me in a fucking parking garage. <laughs> All right, let's do it in December when I'm out there. All right. <laughs> I This reminds me a lot of Until Dawn. And it makes me want to play Until Dawn, which is, I guess, Until a Dawn. good thing for this, for this movie. Until Dawn. I don't remember Until Dawn. Until Dawn, the game. Which game was that? It's the one with the teenagers where you're watching the movie and Oh yeah, that one. It's one giant quick time event. Good game, good game. <laughs> I don't remember that one. <laughs> Up on the mountain with the snow and the wind it goes. Alright. Spoilers. So forgettable bullshit we found on Wikipedia and sometimes IMDB. So box office budget. 
four point eight million. Not very much. That's the not... opening weekend. Twenty six million. So crushed it. So this was a micro budget movie. Yeah, and it fucking smoked. Domestic gross fifty five point seven million. Worldwide one hundred twenty five point five. So Jesus Christ! Destroyed. Yeah. Now it makes sense why they made a second one. Yeah. Absolutely. And it also makes sense why John Cena wasn't in it because he would have doubled the budget. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, so the film was originally announced in two thousand and seven. Seriously? Oh, wow. Yeah. Originally with the title Half to Death. And uh so the first thing I thought when they wrote that when I read that was do you think they were originally gonna cast Blake Lively? I don't get it. Maybe. Cause Blake Lively and uh, uh what's her name, the chick who's in this? Uh Jessica Roth look very similar kind of I oh like. and blake lively was especially back then yeah in 2007 yeah. that yeah. was kind of blake lively's look yeah yeah i mean but it's hard to imagine them getting a hotter chick but blake lively was have been it all right so uh here you go apparently it was gonna be megan fox Ugh, no and it was gonna be produced by michael bay <clears throat> that would have made this movie terrible agreed yeah. that because what was that jennifer's body remember that movie that movie was actually no. kind of interesting i it was not like good but it was interesting i remember really not liking it and it was like it was very obvious of like jennifer uh not jennifer of uh megan fox is just not good for that yeah no i don't think it would have been better with megan fox by any means um so Next was the Bayfield University baby killer costume was designed by Tony Gardner, who also designed the ghost face mask. Oh, nice. There you go. Ghost face killer. Yeah. So I just thought like, I mean, I thought the and I don't know. That's part. I thought it worked. I thought like that was one of the things that I thought of is I was like, oh, the baby mask is so much like the ghost face mask kind of in some ways. And then I was like, then when I read that, I was like, oh, wow, that's fucking cool. Yeah. Th- I, honestly, this movie does make me want to go back and watch the scream movies again, because it's been almost 10 years since I've watched those. Never seen them. Oh, you should watch them. You should definitely watch them. At least the first one. The first one's the best by far, but... Uh, uh, it's honest, spooky season, so might as well. So, one and two were both good. Three is the low point, and four was okay. Uh, yeah. The original script written by Scott Lobdell included material intended to make the film R-rated. Some scenes involved grislier death depictions that were entirely altered by the film's director, Christopher Landon, when he rewrote it. The film was shot at Loyola University in New Orleans. Uh, In the scene where Tree walks through the campus, quad naked, (coughs) had to be done very quickly, and it was, given that it was filmed on on an active college campus, it presented the risk of students witnessing the scene and being filmed slash taking photos and the crew took extreme precautions to clear away any potential onlookers and they used an all-female crew and during any of the times that they weren't shooting they were covering her with like jackets Hmm. and in the end they managed to do it in just two to three takes that was nice it was a cool scene absolutely because it was i I think it like genuinely it did contribute to her character building because it was like her like kind of just experimenting and having some quick fun with you know her situation yeah totally um next i have noted composer bear mccreary did the score nice bear also did the score for god of war and 
Godzilla, King of Monsters. And okay. And he also did uh, an arrangement on Angry Video Game Nerd. Yeah, he's actually done he's done a lot of video games and quite a few movies as well. So he's noted to the point where on the IMDb thing, he actually it says or no, maybe, I guess it's on the one on on the pick uh never mind. I'm on the no, I'm, I'm, But I'm, never mind. Bear I'm McCreary, sure. his the his best work I think is God of War because that soundtrack is incredible. Fair enough. It is a great soundtrack. Um, the film's trailer featured 50 Cent in the club as Tree's ringtone. And Landon said the film could not afford to use the track, but they still preferred the eventual song that music supervisor Andrea Von Forster improvised which was the comedic busy day birthday which was the whole little yeah it's your birthday and you gotta pick up the phone i guess thing so i don't i don't know <laughs> it, i do think that that definite that having into club in the trailer probably helped the trailer but i don't know hmm. i okay um, but. I kind of hated myself for kind of liking that birthday song. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I mean, as a ringtone, I kind of just got used to it and passed it off eventually. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, since we don't only watch bad movies and TV, let's talk about some of the stuff we've genuinely enjoyed watching lately. Uh, let's start with Pat this time. Uh, so, like I mentioned before, I watched... Um, I watched a show called Living With Yourself on Netflix and it's Paul Rudd oh. playing uh, playing both a super depressed guy and a clone of the super depressed guy and basically the premise of the show is that like he goes to this spa where he's like supposedly everyone who goes to this spa it's like by referral only and everyone who goes to this spa comes out like feeling ultra refreshed and like their life is just totally turned around and so he goes to this spa and then it turns out that the spa doesn't actually like refresh you they just clone you make make the clone happier and then kill you and bury you in a shallow grave but <laughs> He just wakes up in the shallow grave and then he has to deal with the fact that there's like he's alive but there's also now this like ultra happy cloned version of himself living his life. I see. Interesting. It was really cool. Really enjoyable. Eight episodes on Netflix. Um, Fun, enjoyable, kind of out there and weird but very, very cool. Right on, right on. I, I, yeah, I, I saw it. I didn't watch the trailer, but it, it sounds interesting now. Tim, what have you been watching? Not much. The most notable thing I've watched this week was the Pats game last night. To be honest, football. I haven't, oh, that was notable. Yeah. That game was it's, exactly. That it wasn't, wasn't notable. Like, <laughs> There's been nothing of note that I've watched this week. Nothing. What? Like who won the Pats game? The Pats. The Pats, obviously. Um, but yeah, no, I don't think I've watched anything this week besides this movie. So yeah, this movie is my most notable thing that I watched this Hooray. week. Hooray! There Fair we enough. go. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, uh, I watched High Flying Bird. It's a awesome movie that uh, Steven Soderbergh made this year uh and he also now has another movie on netflix uh the laundromat i have not watched it yet but uh it's a movie about like a nba player who's been drafted but then there's a lockout and he is trying to figure out what to do with himself because he's just like a college kid or a kid fresh out of college who doesn't have a lot of money and doesn't come from a lot of money but was expecting to have a lot of money 
Right. And now does not. And then uh, his agent is played by Ray Burke. Uh, Pat, we were talking, we mentioned, uh, de- uh, no, not the Stephen King show on Hulu. Ray uh, Burke is the character's name. It's Andre Holland. Or Andre Holland. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Oh, uh, Henry, Henry Weaver. Henry Deaver. Yeah, from Deaver from, uh, yeah, Castle Rock. Castle Rock. And, uh, yeah, he's really great in it. And, uh, then it's also got, uh, Zazie Beats who plays uh andre holland's assistant and yeah great movie and it was also shot on, entirely on iphone oh, so that's kind of cool that's really um cool. i would definitely recommend watching it it's uh just yeah it's really very interesting movie nice yeah. i might have to check that out also quick note castle rock starts again tomorrow oh does it sweet yeah all right. Well, that wraps up this week's discussion of Happy Death Day. Join us next week when we'll be discussing George Berry's 1977 film Deathbed, The Bed That Eats. <laughs> Don't forget okay. to check out our incredible website, coldnorthpro.com, where you can see everything we do in one place, specifically like our weekly gaming podcast, Hard Reset. See you next time, and don't forget, no refunds. Death bed. Yeah, I don't need it this time. The bed that eats. I might need it for next week, though. Can I get a preemptive <laughs> refund? Okay, you know what? That works. <laughs> you sneak in. Yeah, death bed and the bed that eats.